So you guys probably remember this PC. I built it for my friend Tony back in June 2018. Uh, so it's a little over a year now. And um, it's got the Ryzen 5 2600X, 8 gigs of RAM, and the Zotac GTX 1060 6 gigabyte card. So I went to watch Joker last night at the movies. By the way, awesome movie you guys should check out. Uh, and Tony asked if he could bring over the PCs and give it to me afterwards so I can take a look at it because it recently stopped working. And me being a good friend, I said, of course, you know, give it to me afterwards. I can take it to the office and see what's up and uh, possibly even make a video on it because I haven't really done a troubleshooting video on fixing PCs. I'm pretty much the main tech guy in my entire family tree. I'm not even kidding you guys. If something breaks down like a printer or a PC, for example, I'm the first person they call and I go over to their house and I fix it for them. So this entire video is pretty much gonna be my thought process uh, of troubleshooting a PC. Maybe you guys can learn something from it or maybe not. Who knows? I honestly don't know what's gonna happen. So um, yeah, let's get started. The Castle 360EX offers the ultimate cooling experience with lots of improvements, including a more powerful motor, anti-leak technology, and three specifically tuned 120mm fans with patented two-layer fan blades that improves noise canceling and airflow. You can also customize the RGB pump by positioning the logo any way you want or replace it completely with your own creation. Click the link below to learn more. Okay, first off, I gotta say, Tony, you kept the PC very clean. For using it for over a year now, it looks pretty much the same as if the first day I gave it to you. So props on that. You probably don't use the system a lot, maybe an hour or two at most per day, mostly on the weekends because I know you work full time. But my first observation, good job keeping it clean. I can't say the same for my brother though. And not only that, but it's missing two blades, which are nowhere to be found. <coughs> yep, look at this. Let's pop off the front cover. Yep, as I expected, majority of the dust buildup is in the front two fans. So yeah, like I said, Tony, I know you don't clean this PC. All right, let's put this aside, we'll clean this up later. Um, so the first thing, obviously, I wanna do is boot the PC to see if I can replicate the issue, so. I don't know if you guys saw that, but there was a quick flash and it looked like the fans were beginning to spin and then the entire system just shut off again, so. Okay, yeah, the PC obviously doesn't work. Now, the first thing I always do, no matter what the issue is for the PC, is I clear the CMOS. The CMOS is powered by a tiny little circular battery, which is often located on the bottom of the motherboard. And if you remove this battery, it pretty much resets the settings inside the BIOS. So any overclocking settings you have, uh, system time, memory timings, all that, it gets reset. Uh, resetting the CMOS does not reset the BIOS flash that stays inside the motherboard. And the reason why I'm resetting the CMOS is to make sure that the motherboard is using factory settings. I don't want any potential settings on there to be conflicting with the troubleshooting of the PC. It's pretty much like a fresh start. So anyways, to properly reset the CMOS, all you have to do is disconnect all the cables, obviously from the PC. Uh, like I said, the CMOS battery is typically located on the bottom of the motherboard, but on this one, it is right beneath the top PCI slot and the GPU is covering it, so we're gonna have to remove the GPU. All right, GPU is removed, and as you guys can see, CMOS battery is right over there. So we're just gonna push on this tab, and it's gonna pop right off. There you go. All right, so now we wait a couple minutes and then we're gonna put the battery back on the GPU and then power the system back on and see what happens. And right now, guys, I want you to pause the video and comment below what you think the problem might be on this PC based on what you know so far. Um, I'm 99% sure I know what the issue is and we will confirm that at the end of this video. So be back in a minute. All right, it's time to put the battery back in. And then the GPU, the cable, Plug in the power supply cable, HDMI cable. Let's try this again, just as I expected. Now it's time to move on to, I like to call phase two, process of elimination. We're basically gonna be testing each component individually to narrow it down and figure out what the culprit is that's causing the PC to do that. So again, we are going to start with the easy components. And what I mean by easy is components that are easily removable. So for example, 
I like to start off with the RAM first. So in this case, we're gonna test one RAM at a time. We'll take off the second one, keep the first one in there. Every time you guys retest the system, you gotta do a uh, power drain. And the way you do a power drain is you disconnect everything from the PC, and then you hold the power button for 20 seconds. That pretty much just drains the fleet power or static electricity from the system. So make sure you guys always do that before you test your system after removing or putting in new parts. So here we go, test number two. Again, same thing. Now what we're gonna do is swap the RAM sticks. I know the, I know the issue was in the RAM sticks, but for the sake of simplifying this video, I'm gonna go through the entire process step by step for you guys. Disconnect cables, hold down the power button for 20 seconds again. All right, plug it in. Do the same thing. There you go. So now normally this is where I would put in different RAM just to make sure you know the RAM isn't causing the issue. But if you guys don't have any spare RAM lying around, then that's fine. You can just leave that stick in there and move on to step number two. I know it's not the GPU issue, but again, for the sake of simplifying the process, we will disconnect the GPU next. Remove the GPU. Again, hold the power button, rinse and repeat. Guys, this entire process is tedious, but it is pretty much the only way you're gonna narrow it down and find out which component is causing the issue. Okay, here we go. There you go. All right, so now we narrowed it down to three components, uh, power supply, CPU, or motherboard. And before we test any of those out, we gotta make sure to disconnect everything from the motherboard. If you guys are using extension cables, now's the time to bring in original cables for the power supply. That way we can test those as well. But before, we gotta disconnect everything. So any storage device you have hooked up, any USB ports for the front um, I.O., disconnect those as well. Okay, so everything is disconnected except for the 24 pin for the motherboard, of course, we need that. Uh, the eight pin EPC connector for the CPU power, CPU cable to power on the fan, of course, and the front I.O. So all the pins on the JFP1 connector on your motherboard, make sure to leave those on there. Do not disconnect that. Now it's time to do the same thing. Hold down the power for 20 seconds. Plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. You guys remember that commercial? Corny as hell. All right, same thing. All right, so now we're gonna be testing the power supply. So uh, before we actually swap the unit out and use a different power supply, we gotta make sure to test it with the original cables. So like I said earlier, if you guys are using any extension cables, now's the time to disconnect them because we're gonna use the original cables from the power supply and, and plug them directly into the motherboard and see if that's the issue. So first thing you want to do is obviously remove the back cover. All right. I've actually had two separate issues where my PC wouldn't boot because the extension cables were at fault, specifically the 24 pin. All right, 24 pin is in, eight pin EPC is in. Let us resume. Okay. No, it is not the extension cables. I feared that it might be the power supply. Um, so now, this is where you take your PC to the shop. Unless you have an extra power supply lying around, that is gonna be our next step. All right, so I'm gonna be using the SF600 from Corsair to test the system. Uh, I'm gonna leave the original power supply in here just yet because we haven't yet figured out what the issue is. And it might not even be the power supply, to be honest. What we're gonna have to do is disconnect the cables once again. And we're gonna plug this power supply in the motherboard. Here we go. That is promising. Fan is spinning. It does look like the power supply was the issue. How many of you guys commented correctly? I'm gonna actually read the comment section, see if anybody guessed. I'm not gonna read the edited comments because I know you guys probably went there and changed it, so. Okay, so now that we know the power supply is the issue, we can put back the parts one by one to make sure that everything is stable and working. So let's say hypothetically, I did put in the power supply and it still didn't post. Um, then I would move on to swapping the CPU, and then from the CPU, I'd move on to replacing the entire board. Now is actually a good time to test the good power supply with the extension cables to make sure that this didn't cause the power supply to go bad. I did test it off the camera, so I know for a fact that these are good. So I'm giving Tony another fresh 
EVGA Brown Certified 500 Watt Power Supply, which is the same one that I put in the original build. I've only had one other issue with this power supply in, in the past 10 years of building PCs. So I would say overall, this is a solid power supply. Um, I'm not sure how, I, how this one went bad. I'm not blaming EVGA or Tony, but I'm just saying. It's not a bad power supply. All right, moment of truth. Let us plug everything back in and see if it turns on. Here we go. Do we have BIOS? Yes. So far, so good. I am just waiting to get to the desktop. Okay then, that is good news. All right, so the PC is running. Looks like it's back to normal. Um, let's say hypothetically, we did swap the power supply and the PC still doesn't boot. Well, that's when you guys have to go back and start the process of elimination from the beginning. Because oftentimes when a part gets defective, it can trigger a chain reaction and it can damage other components inside the PC. It's happened many times before, guys, trust me. So the best way to really find out, weed out the, uh, the defective parts is by going through each one of them and testing each component individually. So that would be my advice to you guys if you're still having issues after replacing the defective part. There can be something else in your system that is still preventing your PC from starting. You know, it's kind of disappointing seeing one of my PCs break down, especially for a friend of mine. Um, I have a lot of pride uh, that goes in my PC builds and I stand by my work. But um, unfortunately, things like this does happen. But I do want to kind of make it up to you in a way, Tony. So uh, as customer satisfaction, I guess, I do want to upgrade some parts of your PC. Nothing crazy, but uh, I noticed you don't have an M.2 SSD. So I'm going to give you a 960 Pro 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Um, it's a lot faster than your current SSD, actually. And I'm going to upgrade your RAM. So you have eight gigs right now total. I'm going to give you another eight gigs. So you'll have a total of 16 gigs running at the same frequency, which is 3000 megahertz. And it's gonna be, it's gonna have the same timing. So it's gonna be compatible with your current RAM. And that will do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a little different than what I normally do, but if you wanna see more types of these videos, I guess let me know by leaving a like. Um, also, if you guys have any additional tips on troubleshooting PCs that I might've missed in this video, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, this is the way I diagnose and troubleshoot my PCs. Other people do it differently. But if you guys have any helpful tips that people can use, let me know in the comment section. I'll be hanging out there and liking a few of your comments and stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.